we've been talking about COVID and this administration's failures to address it <laughs> this far in. They campaigned on, we're so much better than Trump. We're going to wear masks. Trump is the guy who is letting people like erroneously die of COVID when we could be treating them. And now we're watching, you know, we're, we're kind of coming out of now the second highest COVID wave of the whole thing. And there's still like 2000 deaths per week, every week for the last four weeks and millions of new cases every week. Probably I think we're at like 8 million new cases every week. Something like one in 11 people in the US is infected with COVID right now. You can have concurrent infections now. Like you can be sick with two different strains of COVID at the same time, not to mention one right after the other. And yeah, so amidst all of that happening, knowing that the administration has basically abandoned any attempt to mitigate COVID spread at this point, the CDC is on Twitter and they do still post about COVID. They post things like this. Your next COVID-19 infection could be your worst, so don't gamble with your health. Vaccination reduces risks and severity and keeps you protected. And the image here is a guy, you know, holding his throat. Oh, I've got a sore throat. And we this comment was hidden. Basically, the CDC is hiding a lot of comments that are providing factual information and that are suggesting that the government should be doing more to try to help the situation. So this one, they this person just retweeted NYC Health and they were saying, oh yeah, you need a mask. You'll have the most protection if you use these KN95s and 95s double masking, disposable mask, cloth mask, you know, those are going to do the worst. And they hid this reply. And this has actually been ongoing with this post. There's more. <laughs> Let me find them. Hey, real quick, hit the like button if you're enjoying the content. Hit the subscribe button as well and turn on all notifications. And also take a moment to check out the links in the description for merchandise and Patreon where you can find exclusive free content. This is another one that was hidden. This reply was hidden. Notice how the long COVID expert protects against long COVID. How do we prevent long COVID? The best way is to prevent COVID in the first place. And he's wearing a mask. And this was from a Senate committee hearing recently that we reacted to on our show. And the CDC hid this in the replies to, I believe, the same tweet that we were just looking at. And, oh yeah, just real quick from the Vertlantic. No, you can't relieve loneliness outside. You have to be indoors for a long time in an unventilated, <laughs> unventilated crowded room to do it properly. This is another one that was hidden. The choice of image is odd, considering that this is a vascular disease, really pushing that false narrative that it's like cold, shake my damn head. Yeah, making it seem like, oh, it's just a little sore throat, whatever, even though this is a deadly and disabling illness that is, you know, primarily wreaking havoc on people's cardiovascular systems. They may be hiding it to make Biden look less bad. I mean, yeah, that's one of the things that is, it's part of the electoral strategy for the Democrats this year is they cannot acknowledge that COVID is as bad as it is. They can't because it's a massive failure of public policy. It is a massive failure of leadership. And it's the, you're the executive branch of the government. We expect to see leadership from you. So yeah, if you have a bunch of excess deaths, you can't make Biden look bad. I do think that it is part of Biden trying to appeal to the right wing audience by going, oh, you know, we're going to shut down these conversations about masks. We can't associate Biden with the mask image because then we will lose out on all the psycho anti-vaxxers who have decided that they want everybody to die. Like they don't want to vote for someone who would wear a mask. My new favorite game to play is, hmm, possibly deadly disease that could mess me up for life with every infection or is it just allergies? Especially this winter. I feel like my throat has been sore all winter. And someone was talking about their allergies and reminded me that there might also just be a lot of mold in the air. And I'm like, God, I think that that probably is what the problem is because of the temperatures. It's not like getting cold and staying cold and it keeps warming up and it's really moist. And yeah. Yeah, Gil. Yeah, I wear the mask outside too because I have real bad pollen allergies and grass allergies. I feel better. My throat doesn't hurt as much when I wear a mask outside. I've gotten COVID thrice now and each time I feel worse than before, even after recovery. I wish more people took this seriously. Right. Folks are not feeling well after like, you know, one viral illness, 
you generally think, oh, that's not going to be a big deal. But no, it's when it's COVID, you per permanently don't get better. You don't get all the way better, at least. One more reply hidden by the CDC, and then we'll talk about a related COVID problem. So this reply was also hidden by the CDC. Again, another reply to this tweet. This is a collage of information indicating your previous COVID infection could kill you. You know, heart disease risk, sores, long-term brain injury, increasing stroke risk, brain damage, long-term heart problems. Yeah, more heart problems, cardiovascular risks. COVID increases risk of 44 neuro disorders, including Alzheimer's. And yeah, these are the things that the CDC is choosing to hide. We're literally in the second worst case scenario. The fear was that COVID would be endemic, like thousands of people die from the flu every year. And for some reason that's acceptable to people. Right. It, it's strange to me, yeah, that it took a disease like this for us to start going, hey, we kind of should maybe not be letting 10,000 people die of the flu every year if that's preventable. Like clearly even with the vaccines and the wide availability of the vaccines, people are still dying. So maybe we should be doing some more public health policy, ventilation kind of stuff and masks, like just making it normal to wear masks. I think in certain situations, point blank period in Buses, I think you should just wear a respirator on the bus. I think you should wear a respirator on the airplane. I don't think you should be at the airport without a respirator on. And N95 has a respirator, y'all. They're not that expensive either. But the risk with wearing a mask everywhere now is that, well, if you're in Houston, you might just get randomly shot at by the police because an off-duty cop in Houston saw a dude with a face mask walking around and went ahead and fired a shot at him. Police have no explanation for why the shot was fired, except that the cop said that he found the face covering suspicious. The person who was wearing the mask fled, and it's unknown if that person was injured. I'm not really going to play this because I don't really care what the pigs have to say for themselves. But And we've, oh, we've seen it before as well. The mayor of New York City, I think, was talking about how you shouldn't wear masks in businesses. Like, businesses should start cracking down on people wearing masks because, oh, if you're an honest person, you wouldn't be wearing a mask, would you? This is part of why I think that calling it a mask is a failure of public health communication. Mask makes it seem like it's just a face covering. You can say that, oh, because it's a mask, it's obscuring your face. It's like, nope, it's a respirator. It's a respirator. I am trying to breathe. It's a respirator. It's for breathing. It's not for covering my face. Just to have a facial covering, people need to realize that, yeah, they need to be wearing like a rated respirator. If you were going outside and you could see that there was really thick smoke and you didn't want to breathe it in, just imagine that. Imagine the vape cloud. As some annoying 20-year-old breathes out a big fat vape cloud and you're like, I have to walk through your disgusting vape cloud now. That's what COVID does. It just hangs in the air. Anywhere in the South, you might have a redneck give you a hard time. Yeah, well, if I lived in the South, I would start carrying a taser then. Like, be careful, by the way. You have to also look up conceal carry laws for tasers. In Kansas, you can conceal carry your gun, but you have to open carry your taser. You are not allowed to conceal carry a taser in Kansas. It's very weird. They let people wear masks before, and now all of a sudden they don't want people wearing them. Yeah, I think it's an actively eugenicist policy. Since when was anyone entitled to see my face anyway? Yeah, they, for security reasons, because they want to be able to use facial tracking on you at all times. And it it's like hard to say, do they specifically want to encourage the spread of COVID, or is that just a happy side effect of the addiction to security culture in this society, the addiction to security theater in this society. Some N95s fit better than other ones. I recommend the 3M brand ones that start out flat and then they unfold because they also have a nice rubber seal for right under your eyes there. And it's big enough, like if you have a pretty small head like I do, it, uh, it still seals, but it just seals all the way back here on your goozle. Is goozle the medical term? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Wear only a mask, true Captain Cougar. I choose not to wear a mask because I don't value my life, but you should value other people's lives. 23% of cases are asymptomatic. 23% of all COVID infections have no symptoms. One quarter of all COVID infections have no symptoms. So you can't know whether you're spreading it. I know in Asia, it's totally normal to just wear a mask. In San Francisco, I think that you, if you're going to be out in an area where there's a lot of pollution, you probably should also be wearing a mask. 
True, mama. Yes, sex workers out there, you should do the only a mask photo set for awareness. Cover your face. Everything else is open. Salt Lake City, the air is terrible too. People wear masks when the pollution is in the red. My boss at the beginning of the pandemic complained nonstop about not being able to breathe. And I was like, girl, I was doing this two months before they told us to. Why is it that a marathon runner who has pretty intense allergies can wear like a real respirator while running a, an entire marathon outdoors in the heat and yet y'all can't wear one inside, not doing anything strenuous? Huh, true. If, if you refuse to mask, don't be surprised when all of the disabled people in your life mysteriously don't want to be around you anymore. <laughs> Did you guys know that the queer community is more likely to be disabled than the general population? People claim they can't breathe from a mask, but then they will walk and talk at the same time for like an hour. And like, honey, if you couldn't breathe with the mask on, you would not be able to walk and talk at the same time. I know. So this is from the Human Rights Campaign. So in a, a survey back in 2020, the 2020 Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, uh, which is a nationally representative survey of adults across the United States, this found that one in three LGBTQ plus adults reported having a disability compared with one in four non-LGBTQ adults. In addition, more than a third of cisgender um, LGBTQ adults and more than half of transgender adults self-reported having a disability. You can't be like, I'm a queer activist and ignore COVID. 52% of transgender adults who were both identifying as LGBTQ and straight transgender people, fully half of transgender adults reporting report having some kind of disability. And one third of LGBTQ adults in general have disabilities compared to approximately a quarter of the general population. So yeah, trans people, like queer people, we really do need to care more about COVID. And like people of color are also disproportionately impacted by COVID. They have a harder time recovering after being ill. They die from the illness more often. We are more disabled than the general population. Like that's a fact. And it means that it should impact how non-disabled queer people think about disability advocacy. Like you can't effectively, like you can't effectively host a meeting, a trans pride. Let's say we want to do a trans pride parade and or like a trans pride party specifically. And if you don't have COVID precautions, then 52% of trans people who are disabled can't go. Literally, you, so you're by by refusing to accommodate for COVID precautions, you're actively preventing half of the community from participating. Now, and if you're doing a more general thing, a more general LGBTQ, like every gay club out there is every gay club out there that's not enforcing mask use, that isn't putting in res uh, some kind of air filtration system, they are all actively excluding one third of all queer people, fully one third of all queer people can't go participate in what is considered a pretty normal part of queer culture, like going to a club and being able to, you know, have a drink or dance and meet people. Fully one third of queer people cannot go participate in that part of our culture. It's pretty clear that other folks don't care about the fact that black folks and queer people are more impacted by all forms of disability and COVID. My dad developed COPD from the air pollution in Russia, and now he uses that as an excuse not to wear a mask. Cute, as though like his breathing problem is gonna be made better by another infection for co from COVID. It's also an important statistic because people with a disability who have a pre-existing disability also have a higher chance of being more seriously affected by COVID-19. Yeah, that's kind of another, you know, Queer people who aren't disabled are more likely to be impacted by COVID and queer people who are disabled are even more likely to be more impacted by COVID. Hi, thank you so much to all of my patrons, especially Diago Nascimento, Mersh Rolvog, Amanda B, Michelle Frateroli, Michelle Winter, Wellington Marcus, Danielle McDonald, DZXN, Suzanne Maynard, Spooky Heather Sylvia, Jamie Jam, Pastnell Infinity, Nova, Elizabeth Bartell, Sojo, Sarah A, Athiet, Kevin Young, Celeste, Desi Quiche, Liam Hodgson, Mr. Atheist, and Ella V. Nobody.